Hey everyone, Effie here. Today I'm back with another video using our new Sweet Folk Hummingbird stamp set. I'm starting off with a watercolor panel. This is just regular watercolor paper. I'm using Canton XL 140 pound paper and I prepped it with some anti-static powder tool. Then I stamped this lovely tulip cluster from our stamp set with some Versamark ink. It's a sticky embossing ink. And then I just poured on some white embossing powder and hit the whole thing with my heat tool. Now I'm just going to start by doing some watercoloring. I'm using my Ken Oliver Color Burst. For my tulips today, I'm using my Peony Color Burst for the petals. For the inner portions of my petals, I'm going to use Gamboge Color Burst. For the leaves, I'm using a combination of Lime Color Burst and Terre Verte Color Burst for the shading. I'm using a wet on wet watercolor technique today. And what that is, is I'm wetting my paper first and then I'm introducing pigment onto my panel onto that wet area. So you have this wet on wet technique where you get a really nice blend. Before I start watercoloring though for that first initial wetting of the paper, I do use clean water and then I apply my pigments to the outer portions or the edges of my petal and then I kind of blend that color in as we get closer to the inside of my florals. But I'm not bringing that peony pink all the way inside. I want to leave a little bit of white for my gamboge. I want my tulips to be two-toned. I'm going to use the same painting technique to the second tulip. For my painting today, I'm using two Pentel Aqua brushes. I'm using a fine tip brush and a large tip brush. But if you have two fine tip or two large tip brushes, uh, that will work for this image because the petals are pretty big in this image. So for my fine tip brush, I, us I will usually dip that brush into the pigment and then I'll use my large tip brush to wet my paper and to blend my color bursts. And then as I paint, I'll just switch off between the two brushes. Now to help me control the moisture on my brush tips, I have a piece of paper towel to the right side of me. And as you see my hand go off screen to the right side, that's me just uh, dabbing that brush tip to get the excess moisture off of the brush. I will also have a little bit of uh, clean water uh, somewhere alongside my work area uh, and I'll just squeeze a little bit of the water onto uh, an acrylic block and this is my water reservoir that I use if I need to dampen my brush. You want a nicely saturated brush but you don't want the water drops rolling off your brush. Uh, so to help control the amount of moisture, just uh, try to experiment between uh, going from uh, the acrylic block with the extra water and dabbing your brush off with a paper towel to control the moisture. So just experiment, you know, how intense you want your color to be and how much water you want while you're watercoloring. So after I finished painting my florals, I went ahead and white heat embossed this sweet hummingbird from the same set and I'm just going to color it in with my color burst. I used this, the same lime green for the body of the hummingbird uh, and I believe alizarin and crimson for the ruby throat and then I believe it's a burnt umber. Ken Oliver has uh, one of these nice dark brown shades in his collection. So once I finish painting, I'm going to die cut the hummingbird and the tulip cluster using their coordinating dies. Just make sure that prior to die cutting anything, uh, everything is dried before you put any of that washi tape or micropore tape down to hold the die in place. So after I've die cut my two pieces, I set those aside. And right now I'm working with a regular piece of cardstock that's uh, cut down to A2 size. And I'm going to start blending on color at the two corners or two opposite corners of my panel. 
I'm using our soft amethyst and orchid crush dye inks and these are the mini cubes. They come in their own little collections and they're really great uh, little sampler packs if you want to try any of our ink colors out. So after I finish blending on the colors with my Clarity stencil brush, I just trimmed that blended panel about it an eighth of an inch on each side and then I mounted that onto a top folding A2 card base. Then I adhered my tulip cluster and adorable hummingbird onto that blended panel using dimensional foam tape. Then I stamped the sentiment in our noir dye black ink onto regular cardstock. Our noir dye black ink is archival, so you can use it to watercolor. Just make sure it's completely dry before you apply any pigment over the noir ink. I cut the sentiment panel into a banner and mounted that onto my card base. And then lastly, I embellished my card using our dew drops. My card is now complete. I hope you all enjoyed today's video tutorial. I had a lot of fun watercoloring this sweet hummingbird and this gorgeous tulip cluster. So thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next time.